Hello and welcome to this webinar from Wifarian in cooperation with the i4i award. Uh, it's in the series Why Wireless Monthly Energy and as I said this month the energy boost comes from Wifarian in cooperation with the i 4 award. Our topic in this webinar uh, here in Freiburg in the showroom of Wifarian is um, startups uh, of the year of the i award and how are they going to change the intro logistics of tomorrow. I'm pleased to moderate this uh, webinar. Many thanks to Wifarian for having us here. Um, what can you expect in the next 60 minutes? Of course, we will explain what the i award is, who the finalists were, who the winner is. And also, of course, we have a discussion about the products and the solutions we can see from the startups uh, as well as a short uh, panel discussion about how what is going to happen in the future. Yeah, and uh, you at home, you're welcome to ask questions in the chat box and uh, these ladies and gentlemen are uh, willing to answer your questions as uh, soon as possible. So our guests here in the showroom I'm happy to have uh, three uh, really experts uh, in intro logistics and their solutions. Um, our host here is the co-founder of uh, Wifarian. Together with his team, uh, he set himself the task of revolutionizing the world of charging systems, wireless charging uh, systems, contactless wireless charging systems to be exactly. Uh, for industrial electric vehicles and other vehicles as well. Um, he describes himself uh, as a tech evangelist and, uh, well, he preached quite a lot in the, in the past about new technologies uh, to stay in the pictures. Uh, he's got uh, a number of believers and not only them, but also the Forbes magazine uh, voted him as Europe's 30 under 30. Uh, that was some years ago, now it's yeah. over 30. So, <laughs> a warm welcome to Johannes Meyer. Thank you. Okay, now going to the next uh, guest, uh, making inflexible conveyors as flexible as possible. That was the task and the idea some people of, the, uh, of a Bremen-based uh, company had in mind in 2017. Um, the uh, brilliant idea, by the way, was not found in the warehouse uh, inside, but in a completely different matter, but we come to that point later. Um, any case, uh, they have managed to make uh, uh, a large number of wheels turn in an omnidirectional way, so that parcels basically can really turn into every direction you want them to turn. Um, so this product was called the Cellovair and um, the, company, the company's business development expert is today with us. Uh, she was some years in Uruguay where she worked for a luxury tour operator um, looking after process optimization, product management and, and sales. Uh, well, uh, she returned back to, to Bremen and uh, then she uh, went to this uh, Celomation startup uh, and now she's working as a team lead business developer. Please welcome from Celomation, Sonia Gabriel. Thank you. So completely detached, that's probably not in space, but in the warehouse, that was more or less the motto of some young people in the community of the Fraunhofer EML in uh, Dortmund. Uh, their idea was to develop an AGV that is uh, connected somehow to a drone and uh, the idea was to do inventory management with the help of this uh, drone and manage uh, the data and uh, analyze the data as well as uh, measuring temperature and uh, some damages that might have happened uh, to the goods in, in the warehouse. Um, actually, she started doing communications uh, with the company during her studies and then she did not decide to go to a big uh, company finally but sh uh, stayed with the startup so uh, please welcome Marie Sangmeister. Thank you. Unfortunately Fog uh, Foghorn uh, decided uh, they didn't have uh, time 
to come here. So um, we'd like to talk about the IFOI award. We talk about this uh, word or this uh, competition um, as if it was normal, but there are some people who don't know uh, what it is. And so we, we have prepared a short film about the IFOI test days as well as the test camp in Hanover. Uh, as you know, this happened uh, in February before the lockdown. So you see people moving around, walking around without protection for mm. their mouth and nose. So here's the video from the test days. So Marie, um, could you please explain what is the IFOI award and um, why is this award in the world? Sure. Uh, so the IFOI is the International Intra Logistics uh, Forklift Truck of the Year Award. Um, yeah, it's uh, basically uh, to present the most innovative products in intra, intra logistics and. Um, yeah, for once uh, it's set to uh, communicate the the uh, innovation strength of the of the intra logistics and uh, to present intra logistics in general to the public eye. So, what made your company uh, decide to take part in this competition? Yeah, we chose to chose to take part because uh, there is an international jury. Uh, of ni uh, 19 countries, I guess. And um, that's a great chance to, to get feedback from an international audience. And uh, yes, that's why we took part. Sonia, what were your reasons to take part? Yeah, similarly to, to Marie, and then um, 
for us was were really two points very special one was that yes we could present uh, ourselves and get feedback from an international jury of journalists uh, not only european journalists but there were people from china from australia where we would normally not get feedback or coverage like this as a german startup so that was really interesting and then the other side was that um, during the test camp we would also be uh, uh, it would also be possible to present ourselves to decision makers of of the industry, and uh, that was really interesting for us. Yeah, what was it like, Johannes, with your company? Yeah, uh, for us, like um, the price uh, is very special because you have this uh, test camp in a big international jury, so the products are evaluated not only on paper but really in uh, let's say real application. So there's a big independent jury who's testing the products, also giving feedback, which is always important as a startup to get. And um, yeah, that, uh, that's very helpful and as well, you know, making me meeting decision makers. And, and furthermore, um, I think this, uh, this prize has a, a very ex extensive reach uh, with over 90 million views uh, last year, I guess, and over 300 magazines reporting on that. And, that's for all the startups very important to get uh, this reach uh, because you can have a great idea, but if <coughs> the world doesn't know about it, you will not be successful. So um, it's a great opportunity. So um, can you say how much uh, work was it to apply for this award and what did you get in, in the return? So yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, fairly easy, the application process. So you go on the ifoy.org website and um, it's a simple application with describing a product, um, uh, implementing some pictures. And uh, for startups, it's also affordable, I would say, with a thousand euros for, for the application. Um, and in return, as I said, you, you get um, a large uh, reach, uh, public reach in public media. Um, so uh, that's, that's definitely worth it. And uh, I can recommend it uh, to other startups as well. Okay, thank you. So we'll see what the reach will be like uh, this year. Mm -hmm. um, the award was just uh, given some, some days ago, um, but uh, after the award is before the award, so mm -hmm. uh, the companies can already apply um, on the website www.ifoid.org. Uh, there will be all the information they mm -hmm. need. Um, anyway, um, I'm talking quite a lot. Uh, actually, now we want to see what your companies do, what the product and the solution uh, is like. And we have uh, prepared some films, some videos that we will see now. We'll start with the drone from Docs Innovation.
So Marie, um, is Docs a drone company that uh, has founded use cases in logistics or is it more a logistics service provider who has found a drone and use it in a special way? Uh, actually, neither one nor the other. Uh, we are a data-driven company, so we collect uh, visual data in, in a logistics environment and process them uh, to relevant information. So the drone is, is only uh, is not necessarily important for what we do. We could also attach our sensors to, to a hot air balloon. It would be quite slow, but <laughs> it would work also. Um, yeah, uh, we collect data. We can do it with, with any kind of, of camera and the core of what we do is our software. Okay, anyway, the, you can see the, the drone and each time you see the drone, people ask uh, themselves, uh, do they have a permit? What is the legal situation? What I'm going to do? What is it like? Yeah, since we uh, operate indoors, there are not that much uh, permits you, you need. Um, yeah, the employer takes care of, of uh, security on the workplace and uh, besides that, there's not much uh, you need to do. You just plug it in and, and it works. And uh, our use case is, is designed to work in idle time, so that makes it a lot easier. Great. And uh, can you explain us how the implementation of uh, the system works? Yeah, basically, uh, we come to the warehouse, uh, drive around with our AGV and um, map the warehouse and uh, then it's just plug and play, so to say. So we can export uh, the results via CSV export or we have uh, interfaces to certain ERP systems and uh, it's not that much effort, really. Sounds really easy, thank you. Yeah. Uh, our next video will be from Salomation. We're going to watch it. So Sonia, um, can you explain us uh, when the idea came with the Salivaer um, and what you did? Yeah, it was a really a, not a normal warehouse situation where it was, okay, we need to, uh, here's a solution, but it was rather that one of the founders, um, he was working on, a, on another project where one part was to find an omnidirectional conveyor that could uh, do some of the work they didn't find any that would fit and then the project was dismissed doesn't work and then a few weeks later he was on youtube uh, watching uh, <coughs> robot soccer and then he thought well these robots actually move very precisely in any direction on a flat surface why not turn it around and that was like the magic breakthrough moment and okay let's not get back to the old project but rather do a new project out of this and this is basically in a nutshell how the Salaway was born it was okay let's take these soccer robots turn them upside down group them together in the size we need for any application and there we have our omnidirectional surface okay uh, soccer robots probably more reliable than 
Werder Bremen in the reality. <laughs> 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 we hope that changes soon and that Werder will perform as our Salovea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, can you tell us what uh, makes the Salovea unique? Yes, what makes it unique is uh, if you start looking from what is now at the moment state of the art in the in the material flow systems, uh, then you will always find that for each task you have one specific hardware. You have roller conveyors, you have mergers, you have uh, commissioning, pick stations, you have everything. But everything looks different, everything is different hardware and we basically have one core product the cell that is combined like we want in the size we need and then software gives it all the functionalities it can cover almost all uh, yeah material flow tasks and uh, that is my one makes it special that we do it with a with the software hmm. um, let's talk about the future of the cell available. are you going to get into deeper development or are you going into mass production both, <laughs> let's say so. Um, the the core product, the cell, is 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 ready. It's it's ready designed. We don't need to go into detail there. It's it's fine. But we definitely want to keep on uh, improving uh, the software because. Um, as we said, we can cover basically all uh, functionalities, but we have to program all these functionalities. We have some of them ready and the rest will come in the next month, years. And I think nobody of us will stop developing so soon. Mm -hmm. There will always be work to be done. And that's also the fun okay. part. Thanks, Sonia. Um, now we come to the video of uh, Yfarian, which we're going to watch. So Johannes, can you tell us uh, what was the initial spark or the idea of the product? Yeah, so uh, our product is uh, contactless inductive charging of electric vehicles. And um, the story uh, how we came to uh, start this company was that um, I met my three co-founders at the Fraunhofer Institute. And uh, we were uh, looking into renewable energy and photovoltaics, how we can make uh, renewable energy more affordable which we successfully did, uh, basically. So um, the next step for, for the global economy will be the question, how can we electrify the whole economy? And an important part of that is all the vehicles out there. Um, a lot of them are electric today already in the industrial segment, but in automotive, for example, we still rely on fossil fuels. So 
that was our initial motivation to get to get rid of that and um, make the electric car a success um, with contactless, easy, automated charging. Um, but then we made an important strategic de decision. We looked um, at the market again and saw that already today in the industrial and inter logistics sector, we have a lot of vehicles mm. and there's the trend for automation and robotics. So you also need um, um, like an automated, high efficient charging solution for that applications. And we managed uh, to build a wireless charging system with 93% efficiency, which is way better than everything else that has been there before. It used to be 50% in the past. Yes, something right? like that. And um, so this, this was a breakthrough. And um, yeah, we decided uh, to start a company to bring this technology to the market and, and solve uh, the problems that we have for uh, different customers. Mm. When we have a closer look at the topic uh, we talk about in process charging versus um, the opportunity charging, mm -hmm. can you tell us the difference? Yeah, so um, opportunity charging is the idea that you use uh, short breaks of the vehicle uh, for recharging. And um, in process charging takes the idea of opportunity charging even further by saying we do this recharging directly within the process so that the vehicle doesn't need to leave um, the, the, let's say, uh, the uh, operation area. So you can use little breaks in the process to recharge the system. And this is especially interesting because we have a trend currently to switch from lead acid to lithium batteries. And lithium batteries are well suited for uh, opportunity charging. And with the right setup um, of this combination, wireless charging in the process, which is like integrate in the floor so you hardly see it, with no pitfalls, and then you can recharge the vehicles in the process. So um, you can uh, reach a 24-7 operation, for example, um, and this is very interesting for a lot of applications. Mm -hmm. We've won quite a number of uh, awards already, best of product from Logimat, mm -hmm. for example. So what are we going to expect from you in the future? So, um, yeah, first of all, we are very happy to uh, have received those awards because it shows us that we are on the right way and we're building products that the market actually needs. Um, but nevertheless, uh, we are not at the end yet. So there's a lot of things uh, we, we have in mind uh, to improve in the future and uh, bring like different power classes for all kinds of vehicles, bigger vehicles, smaller ones. And um, this is really a dynamic field. So we, we continue to make our products even better. Okay, great. Uh, so we come back to the IFOI award. And as you know, the Corona crisis uh, ha gave us all the, the problems. So we had to make uh, a virtual mm -hmm. uh, digital ceremony of the mm -hmm. IFOI awards uh, celebration ceremony. And uh, for that purpose, we developed a robot called IT20, uh, the intro logistics transformer in the year mm -hmm. 2020. So, uh, so to say, and not to be confused with E.T. that was the guy that <laughs> wanted to phone home in the 80s. Uh, so let's now watch uh, the video of the winner of the IFOI award in the category uh, Startup of the Year in the year 2020. This is a blueprint for inductive charging in future intralogistics. The iFoy Award in the category Startup of the Year goes to Etalink 3000 by Wiferion. We are Wiferion. We are very proud to win the iFoy Award 2020 in the category Startups. Yeah! So, congrats, uh, Johannes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, great. What was it like after the, you won the, the award? Yeah, it was a great feeling. Uh, we are very proud, obviously, because um, we, we worked hard uh, like the last years uh, to build this company and build the products. And um, our whole team worked very hard to make this happen. And so uh, we are very happy to receive this award. Um, and yeah, it would have, would have not been possible without the hard work of our team. And it shows us we are on the right direction and we have to continue our journey. Um, yeah, so it's a really good feeling. <laughs> Great, thanks. Okie dokie, now we come to the next part, our panel discussion about 
how startups are going to change the future of intra logistics or are they going to change it um, anyway if you look back at the last uh, weeks uh, that was all about the corona or covid 19 pandemic um, but uh, startups are used to uh, let's say home office using mobile devices uh, how strong was the change what did you what happened for us it was I think we it was an adaptation process first was like okay being at home 24 7 that is crazy and now working and but I think it took us very few time to adjust I think that was a big benefit because we had all the technol technologic solutions already uh, sorted out we already had the telephone digitally so it was no problem at all to answer on the cell phone from home or from the yeah. laptop and it was a question of two or three days to come up with okay let's meet every day at 11:30 for coffee breaks so we check in on each other yeah. are we still on the same page still feel like working together in a team and yeah that was uh, not that hard as i think it hit some of the larger companies which were very used to their way, uh, way of working. Mm -hmm. We also have our startup team spirit, which made it quite easy to, to continue even at home. But on a personal level, I think it was, it was quite disruptive. But, but uh, considering uh, that we develop hard and software, uh, the team really adjusted well. Mm. Great. It yeah. also was a chance, I think. Some uh, some of us uh, continue to work from home even after Corona. Yeah. So and in general, what what we noticed is uh, since not only we are start working from home, but also the uh, the other companies, uh, so less business travel, uh, less meetings. Um, it gave a great opportunity to connect with the customers mm -hmm. via um, like vid video calls. So I mm -hmm. think that that's a new interesting format and uh, yeah, the people had more time uh, to look at new innovative, innovative stuff. So this was also a benefit of this whole time. Yeah. yeah, we got even more inquiries in April than like in March or February. So yeah. Logimart did not uh, take place, but mm -hmm. we still had like an increase in, in, in requests afterwards due to Corona and people having time to look into innovation. It also forces you to, to be more creative mm. because you, you don't have expos and fairs where you just can present your product. You have to be creative and develop new concepts to, to get in touch with customers. Mm. So you're all more into less, more or less into intro logistics mm -hmm. uh, work in that sector. Uh, when you talk to other startups or other people, uh, is it uh, sexy to work in intro logistics? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I wouldn't say sexy is no. the first word that comes to my mind when I hear intra logistics, but um, it's actually quite cool to have um, a hardware product that helps to power like uh, all the moving of goods every day. Um, so, um, and if you like for the broader public, tell the story that, that everybody who's ordering online uh, something at Amazon, for example, at some point uh, will probably get in touch with the products and solutions we built um, someday soon. So mm. um, this is actually quite cool, yeah. I think we're sexy at the second look. Yes. Like when you get I to agree. know us a bit better, <laughs> not on the first sight, okay, what is this? This is just a truck driving. Oh, it can charge wirelessly. Whoa, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so startups will probably not start to build new uh, forklifts because there is established companies who mm -hmm. do that for many many years and they do it also quite well so uh, what do you think in which area of intro logistics are startups going to to change uh, the world i think right. um, with processes and uh, the use of data or the connection of data startups have a rather naive point of view um, and question existing processes and think why is it so hard? We can do it better. And I think that's, that's a good point to, to really be innovative, just to, uh, to say, I don't care what was before. Uh, I just do what's, what's practical and what makes sense. And that can simplify processes and make them more efficient. Processes, yeah. one topic. Yeah. yeah, not focus on 
like what components do we have and what solution can we build but rather what should the solution be able to perform okay what process do, do we need to think the other way around i think this we can mm -hmm. offer it better than the established companies and their startups will make the big difference and for example ai is a big topic with us i mm -hmm. think with all of us and um we really take this step and uh, can do it quicker and more flexible than the um, established players and I think often startups um, have a more unbiased view on mm. the problems because we can start from scratch from a white sheet of paper without uh, anything, um, yeah, uh, traditions or w whatsoever. And um, so that's very helpful because we can really um, look at the things and see the problems and then find a solution for it. And um, if you look in, in the past, um, a lot of great innovations uh, have come uh, through startups who were founded specifically for that reason to um, create a solution for an existing problem. You just mentioned unbiased view. What other advantages do startups have in comparison to other companies? I would say startups um, have the advantage that they can uh, make decisions very quickly yes. and um, also so you, you have an uh, idea um, of an innovation and you, you have some, some thoughts around that and then you leave your office, you look at the reality and you will um, most probably see that things are different than you thought. <laughs> but uh, that's not uh, per se a, a problem because as a startup you are able to pivot very quickly like a basketball player. You can change the direction quickly and uh, do that um, as often as necessary until you really have the right uh, product market fit and your solution really solves the problem. And uh, I think that's one of the big strengths of startups, mm. probably also decision making. Yeah, and we, yes, this short ways like yeah. that. There can be a student assembling one of our cells and then notice, well, this is not the perfect way and go to the CTO and knock on the door and two days later we have changed it. And not like, oh no, we have always done it like this. We have to first get this authorization, that one, that one. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen and that's really cool. And I think we as startups, we are fearless. If you are afraid, you don't get into setting up a company and we are just like, okay, let's go for it and maybe fall over or fail quick start over and really we're not afraid of, of, of taking risks or of diving into markets that haven't been explored because we don't really have so much to lose as maybe the big players. So uh, we can focus on one topic in a startup and mm -hmm. make it accessible for, for the whole market and not only for one company and mm -hmm. uh, that's our big advantage. And I think we're used to change. We're already used yeah. to always changing, being ch in change of processes or anything and yeah. this makes us more agile. Yeah. Uh, Sonia, you just mentioned uh, fearless diving into new topics, but this could also mean that you bump against uh, the wall uh, in <laughs> during your work. Uh, what are actually the challenging uh, the challenges that you face in everyday work? Well, first, I think money is a critical issue for all of us uh, in developing. You need uh, some support. We may not have uh, enough staff, so people and money is always lacking, I would say. But uh, then I think our biggest challenge at the moment is to get like get the point, uh, get the uh, the product tested, and have somebody being there, an ambassador for us. Say, okay, here you get your first hours, or we now got the first hours. But everybody asks, where is your system already running in real life operation? And then we can tell, well, there it's running for 10 years because we exist for three years now. Yeah. And this, like getting to this point that we can say, well, it runs here, 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 or exactly your application is running there. And we can give you a reference of real, real life business. That is for us at the moment, the critical point. Mm -hmm. How do you do, how do you, uh, talk to a testimonial, how do you make him speak about the product and your company? The good thing is that normally once we have it installed and running, people are quite 
if they see it works, they're quite open to talk about it because they are proud of like being able to show we are innovating because we use an innovative product that works quite well. But you need to get there and to get there, you need to find somebody at the beginning of one of the big customers that believes in you, believes in the product and is like an ambassador inside the company and gives you these first chances. That's okay, so important. Money, testimonial, what else? Yeah, I would say uh, in a startup you, you have problems all the time, but the type of problem <laughs> is changing. <laughs> so <laughs> at the beginning it's most of the time, okay, you need to convince your first investor to get money, get even started. Then uh, next thing um, you, you need to develop the first prototype and the product and then convincing customers and then uh, convincing uh, established companies that you are not a garage startup anymore, but yes. a professionalized company <coughs> with processes, quality, um, uh, safety of supply and all these things. And, and then to really build the organization to a um, highly professional level and uh, without losing the startup spirit. That's uh, one of the next big growth challenges mm -hmm. that we are like currently facing. Um, so that makes it interesting because um, you're solving problems all the time, but you're solving new problems all the time. It never gets boring. Yeah. There's always something to do. But the yeah. startup spirit often, often makes that you focus, focus on the wrong aspects of something, you ride the wrong horse, so to say, and there needs to be someone who says, okay, that's nice, but we have to focus and this is uh, what we do. Mm. And do so. Yeah, look for support from the outside, from somebody in the industry who knows when you're going the wrong way and who will do it without judging. Oh no, this won't work because you run the wrong way, but rather it's like guiding you get back on track. And also I think the exchange between startups is very important mm -hmm. because we realize that we are solving the same problems all the time. <laughs> so we have different products, we have different markets. Maybe, but um, that the basic problems are the yeah, same. We all need so. a CRM and see exactly, yeah. <laughs> how to yeah. use an ERP, all yeah. these structures. Okay. Yeah. So you can exchange your ideas after the yeah. webinar <laughs> as well. <laughs> we'll For sure. Anyway, well, you just mentioned uh, finance uh, as is one important thing, but the other important thing is also to have really good uh, staff um, so that you have really the brightest uh, people uh, they get attracted also with uh, big money from big companies. Um, how is your solution? How do you get uh, the personnel? Uh, we, we try to yeah, communicate our spirit to the outside. So people see, okay, uh, it seems to be a great team. Uh, what they do uh, seems to be great. Uh, so I want to join them. And it's not that hard really to, to attract new people. We have a quite international team mm. in Kassel, which is not... Uh, common to have uh, such a cool team in Kassel, but it's not that, not that hard really. Okay, so mindset uh, is important. In yeah, world. and um, I see that it's uh, like it startups a little bit uh, also like a, a trend topic, I would say, or a trend uh, idea. So uh, seven years ago, like the, the lot of people went uh, to uh, into consulting, for example, but today, um, like startups are, are really uh, well seen also by, by the um, people finishing uh, university. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a challenge because um, having a great team and smart people is really the, the key factor to success. Mm -hmm. It's more important than anything else. So hiring the right people, um, that's absolutely essential. Yeah, I think what, what we can also offer is to really say, here you can make a change, make the difference. Here mm. you can really do something like achieve self-realization, to be part of something big, of change in industry, of mm -hmm. designing something new. And, and really, it's not you have a defined career path where you will go from eight to five, do your hours, then you know you can be promoted to team lead, mm. then you can be promoted to regional lead, and you already know that will be my career. Here you come and we say, okay, design your own career grow with us, grow in the way you want to grow. And if you want to be trained, we support you. And all together we will grow and everybody will be part of this and not only really be part, not be like an employee that is part of the company. You are part of the product. And I think it's really important as well to treat, to not dive into the um, 
uh, into this is we are a startup mm. you have to work many hours we can't pay you that much you have to try from the beginning to really say okay we people are the most important as you said for us mm -hmm. we treat you like that we try to give you the best possible deal we try to pay you almost as good as in the established companies or better if you can and really say we do what we can to yes there's many people on the phone who try to persuade you about uh, joining an initiative or uh, an accelerator. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us what is really necessary and useful and was it just a waste of time? Um, yeah, I think for, for every startup it's, uh, it's great to take part in two or three accelerators at the mm -hmm. beginning when you get started because you get a lot of coaching and training and Especially you can connect to other startups, which we mm. know gonna solve so have the same problems down the road. So that's that's helpful, but um, um, it's not helpful to do accelerators like every couple of months because you really need to focus. You have limited mm. resources, so you need to focus on um, finding the right product market fit, building great products, building the company. Mm. But uh, some accelerators at the beginning is definitely helpful. Yes, and fine. Really take the time to not jump on the first opportunity because yeah. at the beginning you're like excited. Oh my God, an accelerator is riding us. <laughs> but uh, really say, okay, let's find the two or three that fit yeah. to us, to our product, to our situation. Because obviously an online startup is different than we doing hard end software. And not try, yes, like you said, don't take part in 10 accelerators at the same time. Focus and and but also don't rely just on accelerators yeah. they can be really helpful but you really have to keep pushing on your own all the time also to you yourself try to grow yeah yeah great uh let's have a look um, into the future uh for the final round uh where is your company going to be in let's say five years marie maybe in, in five years we we uh will be the number one uh, provider of uh data processing uh, of the processing of visual data in a logistics environment. Um, maybe not with drones uh, because they're not that essential for what we do, but uh, yeah, to be one of the number one providers for the procession of uh, visual data. Okay, we will see Johannes, what happens? Five years is a very long time <laughs> uh, for a startup yeah. considering that we've been founded four years ago, but um, um, I'm looking into the future quite optimistically because, um, yeah, and I think that also showed the different prices and the customer voices that um, we are on the right way with our products. And um, our goal is to become um, a major player in the industry uh, to supply um, vehicles, robots, forklifts with energy, contactless, wireless and uh, building a global standard for, for the inductive uh, charging, basically. So that, that's our vision, that's our goal, what we're we working towards too. And um, yeah, I'm excited uh, yeah, on, on this to, to be part of this journey and to, um, to yeah, continue building this company. The small unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> we see. Sonia? Um, yeah, I think we what we want to achieve is not to be the next big thing, but to be the big thing in omnidirectional conveyor technology. And uh, this is where we want to be in five years. And what we think is a challenging goal, but it's definitely possible. And now the, con the specific steps will be to say, OK, now we're available in Europe. And in five years, we want to be globally available and established. This is what we think is a possible goal and I think all of us the three products could be there in five years to be globally established and yeah, change the world of intralogistics. Okie dokie, so maybe we talk in five years again what's, uh, what <laughs> happened. Now our time has come to an end uh, of this uh, webinar. We've uh, talked about the finalists and the winner of this year's uh, i4 awards uh, in the category Startup of the Year. Thanks to all of you for coming here to Freiburg Thank and uh, participating here. And of course, thanks to Wifarian for being the host of this uh, webinar. I'm looking forward to the IFOI in the next year. You'll check out the website and you know what's going to happen. Thanks. Thank you. Thank it's you. good having you. <laughs> thanks for having us over. <laughs>